All right, this time the quick speed shop. I'm painting the grill shell on the Model A hot rod shop truck, and I got a special little road trip, and it's all going down right now. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. Okay, I've been tinkering, and I, what I've done, I finished wiring up the third brake light, so I got all the other wiring hooked up. I got the battery in, so I went and I put power to this thing, and we're going to try and see if the lights work, and we're going to do that right now. Um, we're going to check the tail lights, the brake lights, the third brake light, the turn signals in the front. I don't have the headlights hooked up just because I've got to remove them here later, but all the other lights are working, and the dash lights are working and all that, so we're going to go ahead and hit it right now. Look at that, we got the marker lights down here. Bam. We got a plate light. Oh yeah, there's a plate light. Awesome. What else we got here? Let me go ahead and hit the uh, hit the brake light. Now watch up here, should get the third brake light. See, and the brake light's down here. Here, let me turn the marker lights off. Ready, here we go. Oh, it's working, look at that. Bam! Oh crap, these things are super bright. Let me uh, turn on the turn signals. Oh, there we go! Now these lights are only brake lights, so the only turn signals are down here. Look at that! Right there it is! If you get down here at the roadway, oh yeah, that's super bright. That's way bright enough for uh, on the front of the car here, or the front of the truck. Awesome, let me try the other one. There we go. Let's try four-way flashers. Aha! Awesome. Let me go ahead and hit the uh, hit the Awuga horn. Ready? Here we go. There we go. That's working. That works. Awesome. So all the lights work here. The uh, fuel sender went to half half tank. I don't know. I'm a little concerned now that the ohms might be off of this new sending unit versus the Stuart Warner gauge. It's in the dash. Hmm, that'll be a problem. I'm going to have to wait and see what happens when I get some fuel in this thing and see what's going on there. But all the lights work. The headlights should work fine too, but all the turn signals work. The dash lights work. I didn't show you those, but they're basically two little lights above the dash and the light and the speedometer. So all that works. And these are, this is awesome. So uh, apparently I, I rewired everything fine and the turn signal switch works good. It's pretty much ready to run now. All well electric done. And if I put gas in it, I'm sure it would fire right up. All right, I'm finalizing up the grill shell here. I went and I painted it all flat black around here. I did all my grinding and sanding. Got the bottom of the chin all uh, straightened out here. Now what I want to do is I want to paint the grill bars green to match the green uh, details on the rest of the truck. So the black is dry. I did this overnight. So now I can mask it up around here. And um, there was a stainless steel trim that went around this grill shell, which I don't have. And eventually I'm going to get one and I can put it back on here. But I'm just going to tape it right at the line behind where the trim grows on. And we'll paint all these grill bars green. And then leave the rest of it flat black and then it'll be ready to put on the truck. So I've got this precariously mounted. Let me remove my mount action. Here. See it here so far. Bam. It's all painted. So. Here we go. Let me get something to lay this face down on first. So I'm just going to mask off this inside structure here right quick so the overstray doesn't blow green all over the inside of this. Then we'll flip her around and get the paint onto it. I'm going to spare you most of the details because this is tedious, but I'm just back taped it and back papered it here. And then now I'm just getting the front side going. I've got tape wrapped around the chin. I'm just going in between the grill bars. This isn't going to be real precise because it's way down low in the front of the truck, you can't really see it, and it's going to get all road rashed and dirty anyways. But I want to try to do some sign of semblance of making it decent here. So I'm going 
right with a good tape in between every grill bar. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought it would, but it's always masking off for the smallest work always takes the most amount of time. I, I worked in a body shop in high school and I used to do a lot of sanding and taping up the cars and it was way less work to tape up an entire car for an entire paint job versus like taping up a quarter panel and a door jam because then you had all that stuff to tape around and you had to tape the rest of the car off to keep it from getting overspray. So if you're painting a whole car all you had to do was tape up the windows and that and the and that was it. But you know a little bit of work it takes the most amount of tape so I'm just painting the grill bars here but I had to tape both sides of the grill shell and all in between so it took a lot longer to tape this off than I did to tape off something you know say I just want to do a paint the whole thing, keep this from getting painted. I could just tape that off and paint the whole thing. So a lot more work to do to little details, but I got my uh, my Hunter Green here, Rust-Oleum Professional. We're gonna fire that up here and get some green on this grill shelf. There, you can watch from afar. I don't wanna get overspraying my camera lines here. Here we go. Aha. All right, I got my flash coat on there and I'll let that set up for a little bit and then hit it with uh, probably two coats of uh, heavy cover and then uh, let her dry. While I'm doing that, I think I'm gonna bust out my Model A Coupe. It's a nice day. I think I'm gonna go practice self-isolation. We're gonna go for a ride in the Model A Coupe. All right, let's fire up the Coupe and we'll go for a ride. <laughs> We stopped someplace cool here for a minute. There's an old Merriam steam shovel. And I've always wanted to stop here. It's right around the corner from my house. There's a gravel pit right across the street. But supposedly this thing went and dug on the Panama Canal back in the, uh, what, 1910s or whenever they built that. Um, we're gonna get a closer look at it. Unfortunately, it's fenced off, so we can't get in there and see it up close. But the thing's super cool. 
It's super cool to have my coop out here on a nice day like this. It's a little windy, but it's real nice. The sun's out. So let's take a closer look at the Merriam steam shovel for a couple of minutes here. This thing is super cool. Check it out. Definitely something you don't see every day just driving down the road. Got my coupe over here. Where is it? It's right over there. Bam. This is super awesome. All right, bam, I made it back. That was a fun trip in the coop, and I hope you liked the little stop off there at the uh, steam shovel. I've been driving by that thing for like 20 years and never really stopped to take a quick look at it. So today was a good day. The weather was out nice. There's hardly anybody around, so we went and looked at that. It's a Marion Model 91. You can look it up on the internet, but the sign says it's the only uh, one known left to be in existence. And... Uh, the thing's pretty cool. Originally, the whole body on that thing was wood in about 1949, 1950-ish. Somebody, I guess, in the gravel pit across the street is where it used to operate. They took all the wood off it or it was rotted out, and they replaced it with a plate steel that's on there now. But the rest of it's pretty cool. The arm only swings like this. The arm doesn't go up and down like a new a new shovel. It swings like this, and then the bucket is actually on a... goes in and out like this and can open and close. So that's how you do all your digging. But super cool. And it's the only one left in the world, so you got to see it right here at the Quick Speed Shop. So now we're back at it here. This should start to be... This is probably dry enough I can untape it. So let's, uh, let's do that. I'll go ahead and lay this down. it already it looks good hey, bam check it out look at this this came out super awesome look at that green it looks good with the black Ooh, it's green from the side there and I put the filler the filler piece into the top. Can you see that? Yep. And then I got the uh, the hood ornament bolted on here. So the grill shell is mint, ready to rock and roll. And the bottom of the chin looks good. And you see that down there? It looks good. So uh, I think it looks awesome. This will be really cool on the front of the truck. Bam! Check that out. This looks awesome on here. It looks super good. It's going to look great with the, uh, the flat black hood on here, which I've already painted and all that. So I've just set it on here because I've, before I run the engine, the only way to put antifreeze in the uh, radiator, it's real hard to do it without having the grill shell off. So I want to get the engine broken and get the coolant all situated. So I can, I can run this without the grill shell on it, but I wanted to get a look at it on here and just kind of eyeball it up and it looks super awesome. Let's, oh, there we go. Let's go back like that. But I think it looks great. It's just enough uh, amount of, just the right amount of green on here with the black and it ties into the whole theme of the truck. So I'm really, really happy with it. It looks fantastic on here. I'm sure I'll get full of stone chips and bugs here sooner rather than later. But I've actually got my license plates on, and I think we're like like one step away from being able to fire this thing up. So uh, some really good progress today. A real fun trip with the Model A Coupe. That was fun to go see that old steam shovel. It's turning into springtime, even though everybody's locked down. We can still go out and do things by ourselves. I went out and I drove around for almost an hour in my coop by myself. You know, 
I only did a couple seconds in the video, but I drove around for an hour. I went and uh, got first tank of gas for the season because it's cheap. Filled her up and uh, went and did that shovel and drove around and saw a bunch of other stuff. Took some roads I don't usually take. So, you know, just because you're on uh, lockdown doesn't mean you can't jump in the car and, and go drive somewhere where nobody else is and go check things out. Just, you know, don't sit at home doing nothing. Go out and take a ride and go look at stuff. Then go back home. So that's what I like to do. Go out and cruise and have some fun. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Hit the bell for alerts. Tell your friends. And we'll see you right back here at the Quick Speed Shop. Hopefully firing up soon the Model A Hot Rod Shop truck.